Shalom everybody. Good job to right like Boimer. And uh, we just came from finishing an entire cycle of learning in the Koilal. We learned the Sugev music, Shira of Zimra, the Shira Sabria, Shira Satira, Shira Nanavua. And music is related to creation, to revelation, to redemption. We learned according to the whole gamut of Pardes, Pshat, Remez, Drush, Soid, according to the literal interpretation. We learned the halachas, the relevant laws that are connected to, to music, the different various sugas and shas, the different places the Talmud talks about music, about shir, salavim, etc. We learned the Haggadah, we learned Kabbalah, we learned the Hasidus of this topic. So Baruch Hashem, after a final full week of learning, we have arrived, Shech we ride tonight to Lag Boimer. And Lag Boimer, what is the day of Lag Boimer? What is the night of Lag Boimer? Lag Boimer, it says in Kisve Ari, there is no, the Rebbe writes, that Lag Boimer is called Yoim Simchas Rashbi, the day of the, the joy of the Rashbi, brings down that his Rebbe, the, the Holy Arizal took his son when the child was a young boy, he took him to the mountains of Miron, and he was joyful with him, and he gave him uh, an upshurn, and that's a day that we don't say tachnun, uh, we, don't, we don't say special benediction pra prayers that are connected to, to remorse, etc. And it's a day of joy, and not only is it a day of joy, but it's also brought down by all the tzaddikim, ready from the 1700s, 1800s, that the day of Simchas Rashbi is also the day of Shemes Rashbi. Not only is it the day of the joy of the Rashbi, but it's the day also of the Hilula, the passing of the Rashbi, and Hilula passing or yard site. In the Zoyer, Hilula means a yard site, someone that's um, to mark a person's death. And Hilula in the Gemara, Hayalma Kivei Lula Dami, or Agadave Lula Mila, the Gemara in Chazal, the word Hilula generally refers to a marriage. But in the panemius level, in the more internal level, the idea of Ilula is unity, a connection, some type of yichud that's created. So Shimon by Yachai on the day of his mess, day of his passing, he passed him with Chai. The day of his passing is connected to the Chat Katir, Skatrana. He reached the highest, Padre, the highest level of yichud, like the Alter Rebbe explains, like the Siyar Zvash. And like the Archa Shulchan says, there's also the day of the birthday of the Rashbi, of Shimon by Yachai. So it's a very important day. This is on one level connected to Rabbi Shimon, and this is the celebration connected to the Zohar. Also, Lag Boimer brought down in La Halacha, in the Shulchan Aruch rules, that it's the day that it's Yom Shepaska, it's the day that the, the death of the Talmud Rekiva stopped. So, what is the, the story of the Talmud Rekiva? The Gemara brings down a Yavamis, the Gemara brings down the story that Rabbi Akiva had Chav Dalit El Talmud Rekiva had 24,000. Peers or Talzugis or Talmidim, different Madrashim, peers, or maybe 48,000, some Magnum Mars is 300, but the number is a large number of students, 24,000 students, and they all perished. This is during the second century period. They all perished during this time period between Pesach Lazarus, from Pesach until Shuas, during this time period, as is brought down Meshema Goinim, the name of the Goinim, during this time period, for 33 days of this time period, excluding Shabbos or Shchedesh or maybe the first 33 days, or from Rosh Chodesh, three days before Shavuos, they didn't pass on. So what happens on Lag Boimer? According to the Mechaber, according to the Beis Yosef, what happens on Lag Boimer is, or Lag Boimer, the 34th day, is the day that they cease from dying. And according to the Ramah, it's the day that something miraculous happened on that day, and that's one day that they did not die. Why? What was the cause? What was the spiritual, metaphysical reason for their death? So Chazal tells the Gemara says that the reason for their death was because because they did not have honor, they didn't honor each other, they didn't have covet, respect. So there's love, Ava, there's love. Bahaflarecha Kamoicha is Zekla Galbatara. Rabbi Kiva says that uh Kamoicha to love your fellow is the greatest principle of the Torah. So they had love. What they were missing was covet. What is the idea of covet? What is the idea of honor? Covet, the word covet comes from the word kaved, heavy, something that's that's weighty. Because the idea of covet means that that you you respect the other person, means that you give weight to their experiences. When a person tells you something, 
and something's bothering them and you feel empathy and sympathy with the other person and, 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 and you recognize that they're going through something that's traumatic, even though to you, it feels silly and narish, it feels like a stupidity and it feels like something that's tiny and small, but if this person's experiencing it, that means you're giving kvedus, you're giving honor to that person's experience. The Gemara says, the Mishnah says at the end of Saita, that where Rabbi Akiva passed away is Batla Kavada Torah. The Kavad of the Torah was, was nullified or, or was diminished. What is the idea of Kavada Torah? So Rashi writes on that, on that Gemara, which is connected to a lot of things that we talked about, the music and the Tagim and the Kudas and the vowels and the, and the little signs on the, on the letters, that Rabbi Akiva was Doyrish, Rabbi Akiva seeked to understand that it was, it was Doyrish, all the time of the Torah, which means that he saw the letters of the Torah and he said there's depth, there's weight to every single experience. This is also on the level of personal, uh, personal interpersonally. Kavod, the idea of honor and respect and that the weightiness of another person is very much important to every human being. Every person wants to feel that their life actually matters, that their thoughts matter, that their experiences matter. The, when David Melech sings in Tehillim, many times he calls his nefesh, he calls actually his soul covet. Ura kavoyidi, my covet should be awakened. The idea of, of, of covet, of honor, you know, like the Balamoy writes in the beginning of Brachas, means that the, the nefesh of them, the person's soul, is connected to, to honor, to the weightiness of that. This idea of to give importance to another person, to give value to another person, to recognize that the other person's life, every single intimate intricate detail of the person's life actually matters. This is the idea of kavod. Kavod, in numeric value, if you spell out the word, so the maral writes, and it's also already brought down, say for Abayr, that the word kavod, chav beis vav dalib, is numeric value of 32. So the maral writes, the maral says that these 32 corresponds to the first 32 days of the sphera. The first 32 days of the sphera, they no go kavod zebazah, they didn't have respect, kavod, honor for each other, and these are the days that we have to do a tikkun for the covenant. And as the Ramdu writes, Ramoshe David Vali, which is the Talmud Chavir of the Ramchal, a very famous Italian rabbi in the and doctor also, he writes that the word avil, mourning, or avil, a mourner, in numeric value, in gematria is 33, and he said these, these correspond to the first 33 days of the Oimer. So the first 33 days of the Oimer is the avoid of a person, the work, the spiritual work that a person has to do for himself and for and for other people is to work in Kwait Khaver. Kwait Khaver means the honor of another person, the respect for another person. It's not arrogance, it's not gaiv It's not that it's not the, the, the person feels the covet atzma that, that he feels arrogant, but it's self-respect. Self-respect means that you take your life seriously, that everything in your life matters. That you say that all the details that are, I'm experiencing in my life actually have value, have weight. That there's nothing that's superfluous. There's nothing that is meaningless. Everything, everything in my life matters. Every moment in my life matters. A person cannot say to himself, okay, so what does it matter if I'm having this thought for myself, I'm thinking these negative thoughts or these sort of thoughts. Who cares? It's just myself, between myself and myself. Or a person says something, says, okay, so I said something. So it doesn't really matter. I didn't really mean it or it does something. So what the, what the Torah is telling us is that a person has to have covered, a person has kvot shemai, a person has to become a, a recognized of the kvedus of life, the heaviness, the the, the olmach shemai means, the yoke of heaven means that you recognize that your life actually does matter, that every single thought that you have affects the entire cosmos. Every single word that you do can tip the scale for better for worse. And it does tip the scale. Every action matters. Every thought matters. Every every deed matters. Every word matters. And the same thing also with another person. Everything in a person's life matters. And that's the, the avoid of the working during Chodesh year, during this month, leading up to Mount Torah, is when a person is working on Kavit Atzma, Kavit Chaveir. And to have Kavit Zebazet, to have honor Zebazet for each other, for itself. This is for the first 32 days. It's known... The, the Medrash writes, and it's brought down in Sefer HaChinuch, and it's brought down in the Ran and Avir Psachim, that the, the 49 days of the Oimer correspond to the, the 49 days that Claudius saw the people left Egypt, and, and they were going towards Mitzvah, towards Mount Tyre. So they were told in Egypt that Tavna Zalikim al that you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're going to leave as a people, collectively, you're going to leave Egypt, you're going to extricate yourself and be extricated from the place 
of constriction, of limitation, of 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 mitzrayim, of ervas arts, the place of avodah zarah, of idol worship and and and, and negativity, are uh, the forty nine levels of tumah of impurity, and you're going to be brought to a place of the forty ninth level, the harmavay, to the place of matan torah, to the place where you're going to receive the torah of cheres, the torah of of freedom, cheres menaluches. Chorus is cheres freedom, cheres men avodah zarah, the yitzhahara, cheres cheres men amisa. You reach a, a total place of freedom of immortality, to amat and tera. So what they, the people did, they, they they counted, they counted because in anticipation, it's imagine tomorrow something is going to happen wonderful, something in three days from then. So you're counting down. You're saying, okay, two more days left of getting married, one more day left of getting married. Whatever you're counting, you're counting to the point to get to that place. So the idea of the counting of the oimer is that they're they're counting down to get to Matan Torah, to receive the Torah. And yet, interestingly enough, they don't count down, which would mean they would start from 50 and say 49, 48, 47, and finally we're going to get to Matan Torah. They're counting up, they're moving, they're going one plus two plus three, because the idea of getting to Matan Torah is not only to get to that place and, and, the, and the count doesn't matter, but it's progressively evolving through the states of moving to create the Tzura Sa'adam, to create the formation of the man, of the human being, of what the Gestalt of a person, that Kaved Atzman, Kaved Chaveri, respect for themselves, respect for their mission in life, respect another person for their mission, to recognize your qualities, to recognize the qualities in another, to recognize your greatness, to recognize the greatness in others through the humility, to, and to, to, to move to, to the binion of the Tzura Sa'adam, and the formation of, of a healthy human being. This is the process that we're going through the time of Sphira. And this is why it's brought down in the Mashal. Others bring down that the, the Oimer, the sphere of the sphere, the counting is the counting of the Oimer. What is the Oimer? The Oimer is actually a measurement, and it was an offering of Sa'orim, of barley. And Sa'orim is Malchah is, 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 Behema. The, the Sa'orim is the food, is grass, foods that, that, that the animals eat. And the idea of getting to, the, to Shvuas, with Shvuas, we bring the Shteh and we bring the two, we offer at the times of the Beis the times of the Temple, we brought these two breads. And these two breads were brought from Chita. These were breads that were brought from wheat. And wheat is a Michael Adam. Wheat is, is a man's food, is a human being's food. So we're going from Michael Behemoth to Michael Adam. We're developing. When Kal Yisrael left Mitzrayim, we left the Kachna of Goy Meker of Goy. So the Medrash says, the Medrash Tilim says, it's like an Uber, like an infant that's being born, that's, that's that's pulled out of its mother's womb, that's, that's, that's being birthed into life. And then we're like a little infant, like a little child, or like a, like a Michael Sawyer, connected to Chaya. And then slowly we're developing and moving and developing ourselves and progressing so we get to a place where there's a, there's a binion of the Tzuras Adam. This is what happens through like Boimer, the idea of Sphira. Then we get to the, 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 this is for the first 30 days, and the first 33 days. Then comes the idea of the final time, the, the, the later 17 days. 17 is the So toiv is good. So the re- beginning of the revealing of good, what's the ultimate toiv, the ultimate good? Ain't toiv ela Torah. toiv nasati lechem. The ultimate good is the Torah. So the, the, the panemius of Torah, the revealing of the Zoyer and the Soydes of Torah, of the inner secrets of the Torah, and eventually the Torah is the Matan Torah, the giving of the, of the Torah, the panemius of Torah, is on Lag Boimer, is a Toiv Yomim, is in 17 days before the Toiv that's revealed on the day of Shavuos. And that's why Lag Boimer is Gal Boimer. Gal means to reveal. What's revealed is the giving of the Torah. So the Halacha, even though the Rambam doesn't bring this down, and the Torah doesn't bring it down, but it's brought down already in the Rishonim, the Goinim, it's brought down that, um, that uh, the Torah doesn't bring down with regard to music, but the Mechavah the, the brings down that the custom during this time period is that not to marry, not to experience weddings, uh, not to take haircuts, and also not to play music. Um, however, the mini Yisrael is, the custom of Israel is, that specifically, unlike Bohemer, since we're allowed to play music, music is being played. Music is played with Shir of Zimra, and then and certainly in Miron, and around already now all around the world, Sabbath Arachadu, and so people are celebrating like Boimer with a lot of with music and with joy and, and sometimes with bonfires. This is already a whole to do the Chsam Seifer and the Shalomation. It was a, whether we should burn garments or not, but it was a, a time of celebration, certainly a time of, of music. So we could say that the 17 days of the Oimer, which we said is connected to the Toiv, is specifically connected to Matan and specifically connected to music. 
So there's a sefer that was written by a Yid called Rabbi Huda Miskato in the 15th century. It was from the Chachbe Italia, from the, from the wise men of Italy, a big famous rabbi. He was known, he is known today for another sefer that he wrote, which is called Kol Yehuda, which is a, a commentary. Kol Yehuda is a commentary that he wrote on Yehuda Levi's Kuzri. He wrote that because the Chachme of Venezia, the, the wise men of Venezia, of Venice, came to his home and told him he should write a commentary. So he wrote this, this commentary, and most classic Kuzris are printed with this commentary called Yehuda. He also wrote another book called Nefutus Yehuda. And in there, Nefutus Yehuda, and he writes, he, he, it's a lot of Kabbalah, a lot of philosophy, and a Hebrew between these ideas. He writes in Drush Rishon, the first opening essay, he talks a lot about music. He, talk, he says something very sweet. He says about music, that music is created through the harmony of sounds. And if you look in the beginning of Bereshit, the beginning of creation, where it talks about music, it talks about the different instruments that were created through, mu through music. It also talks about also the kalim, the, the vessels that, that were created during that time period whether they're for, for war or for, for other elements. But he says that the vessels that were even created during this Iron Age or whatever age you want to call it, that's when music was developed. Really, in the beginning of, of human civilization, music was created because and music was created from the combination of all the various sounds. So he said, that what is the definition? What is the, the depth of music? Music is the harmony of sounds that are, are, are that, that coalesce and come together in a very integrated, beautiful way that creates music. And then he says, that the, the root of the word music, which is sweet. He says, al yachsar mezeg, when the Pasuk says a mezeg, mezeg means like the harmony and mizug of, of things. He says a music comes from the word mezeg, because the idea of music is harmony of sounds, a symphony of, 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 different, of different types of sounds that creates this har harmonic sound, melodic sound that creates this melodic sound of music. So now, let's go back to what we're saying. The first 32 days of the Oimer, the first 32 days of Sphira, what are we doing? What's that void of a person? A void of a person is covet, honor, respect. Love sometimes bridges a gap, but sometimes it diminishes gaps, it diminishes boundaries. Love is yichud, it's echad. So when a person has ava, echad, sometimes they, they, they morph into one, they coalesce into one thing with, with, the, with the elimination of all boundaries of all separation. What is the idea of covet? Covet means, covet chaveri, that you have honor for another person means you respect their boundaries, you respect their place. And that's the avoida of sphira. The avoida of, of sphira, certainly for the first 32, 32, uh, 32 33 days of the Oimer, is the avoida to actually create the proper space for yourself. What are we doing during the sphira? During the sphere, we're counting, we're counting. What is counting? We're counting one two, three, four. And the idea of counting is that every single day is distinct. Number, day number four is different than number, number three and number five. And you can't count, it's true, you can't count number five without number four. And eventually you're gonna count to the Tisbur Hamishim Yoim, when you're gonna count 50 days, you're, not, you're actually not gonna utter the word 50th day, but it's gonna be the summation, the totality of all the 49, which is that the, all the individual digits become a collective whole. But in the process of actually counting, it's very important the individuality of each day. Some, day one is not day two, day two is not day three, and day three is not day four, and, and, that's just, and it follows till day 49, which means that every single day is distinct. That's the idea of covered, the recognition of the individuality, the recognition of the space that every person holds, not to, trans, trans, tra, uh, not to, to, to transgress or transpass on that other person's space to move into that other person's place, to give weight to that person and allow the person to have that boundary, not to, right. So this is the idea of covet. The last 17 days is the idea of toif. And the Torah tells us in the beginning of Horatius, it's not good for man to be alone. What does it mean it's not good for man to be alone? That the idea of ultimately what toiv is, toiv is the idea of unity. Toiv is the idea when you can actually blend everything back and together. Not chas v'sholem, that they're blended in a way that they lose their individuality, they lose their distinction. But the idea is that we create a period, a separation, or avdala, a, a distinction, the source of them, the, the man becomes formed, the human being becomes formed as their individual in their, in their space, in their kavod atzmei, in the kavod chaveri, you recognize the boundaries with others and you respect the boundaries, you respect their space, you respect their life, you respect their individuality, and then 
you join them together. This is very important sort of in this time period that we're living through, the entire world is living through this time period, where people feel a certain sense of isolation or being quarantined or being alone. What is that void? What is the service? What does Hashem want from us during this time? Hashem wants us to build the tzura of what it means to be an individual outside what it means to be a collective. What does it mean to pray, to daven, but to pray alone? What does it mean to learn, but to learn alone? What does it mean to, to, to share or to, be, to, to give charity and somehow be this in this alone space? So we're creating the havdalah, the separation. Ultimately, of course, the purpose is it's not good for man to be alone. The intention, the ultimate toiv, the ultimate idea of the goodness is that it should be the hamtaka. So the havdalah, the separation, brings us to a place of the hamtaka, the greatest sweetening. And this is why the greatest sweetening that we can do is through music. Because music is, by definition, something that is harmonious. Music is something that's melodic, that brings different sounds together to create this beautiful sound. And music actually brings people together. It's the, it's the sound of the world that people can un, unify together through this music. So what greater honor and pleasure on Lag Bo'emer, on the special Lag Bo'emer, Toshin Pei, that when people are feeling this, the, the Havdalah part of it very strongly, the separation part of it very strongly, and maybe people are developing a Kavad Atzmai, and a Kavad Chaverchai, they're, they're developing a self-respect for their boundaries, and respect for boundaries for other people. So not to start bringing the world, bringing people together, to bring it, bring it through music, to bring closeness, and especially now that we're going to have the privilege to uh, hear from wonderful arts, the top level of the artistry, from beautiful musicians, musicians that are uh, songers and writers that are connected to, to the koil, a lot of tambidim of the koil in the past and the present and eventually in the future. So it's mamash, a pleasure and such nachas to, to hear some of the most talented, honest, beloved, talented, beautiful musicians. So they should help, we should enjoy the music, we should feel the yichu, we should feel the hamtaka, the sweetening, and we should experience the true hamtaka, the true sweetening with the coming of Mashiach, and revealing of Mashiach, the hair of your menim. Rabbi Dovber Pinsen and the Kolel Liyun, I'm wishing you luck, but Omer Sameach. And I want to dedicate this song for you all. Enjoy your Frobrengen. I wish I was there with you.
נפתח ונראה את השמיים רק אם נאמין ובלי שום דאווי בדרך העולה לה נשאיר לאהבה אם ברור הכל אפשר וזה לא מאוחר השחר כבר עלה, לה, נשיר לאהבה, כולם ביחד, יחד, לב אל לב, נפתח ונראה את האור שבשמיים, יחד, לב אל לב, נפתח ותקווה. Shalom Aleichem and Log Sameach. My name is Jorian Polis Schutz, also known as Yona Ben Shlomo, and I'm a long-time member of the Ewan Center community in Brownstone, Brooklyn. We hope very much to be able to return to that space with a minion soon. Bezrat Hashem. Under the auspices of Rav Dov Ber Pinson, a few years ago, I founded the Ewan Kolal, And uh, we have really done some interesting and groundbreaking limudim since then on a wide variety of subjects such as Ketoret, Bein Hashmashot, Man, Mabul, and uh, we also did a series of uh, limudim on the different senses, on the five senses, as well as on the colors. It's an unusual program. We call it full spectrum Torah learning. We take one of these themes and we create a curriculum around it where we progress through the Pardes structure from Pshat, Remez, Drush, Sod, um, and we really get to explore the full meaning of certain themes within the Torah world, which of course also um, are within our world, within our experience of life. We always make a point to try to connect the learning to what, what is happening in our lives and what we are perceiving phenomenologically and psychologically. So for those who have been Zoche to attend the Yun Kolo has really been an important experience of post yeshiva or extracurricular learning. Um, we try to make it available to people by um, studying in the evenings mostly except for Sundays. This past week, we inaugurated the Iyun Kolel virtual edition, and it was a wild success. Uh, the theme was Shira, and it's a great time of the year to be studying uh, Shira, song, uh, right before uh, song returns big time tonight on Lagba Omer, uh, not only with this concert, but really with all of the uh, music makers of Klal Yisrael who are ready to spring into action to bring healing to this world that so badly needs it at this time. The music that comes from us is part of repairing and elevating the world. This is the kind of teaching that many of us have, have received from Rav Pinson over the years um, that he's written about in his various books. And we get a lot of chizuk in our creative avoda from um, the validation that these kinds of teachings give. Um, not all of us were meant to be scholars. Certainly all of us were meant to learn Torah, but some of us perhaps 
are being asked to contribute through the musical form. And our performers tonight um, are part of our larger Eun community. They've pretty much all attended the Eun Kolel, as well as the Eun Center uh, for Davening. And Torah is really an important part of the way that they understand themselves as musicians in the world. And really, that's, uh, there's a lot of credit that goes to Ruff Pinson and his generosity of spirit um, with all of us through the years. So thank you to Ruff Pinson for providing this space. Uh, thank you to all of you who are attending. And um, our first artist is uh, Levi Robin. Levi is a chassid. Um, he is someone who is deeply involved with his Jewish journey and uh, Torah learning, um, but his voice comes from a very deep and universal place. And mimamakim uh, uh, is, is the, the word that comes to mind. The deeper the voice, the more resonant and the wider uh, it can have an effect on the world. Levi has yet to have a international hit, although he uh, toured with Matas Yahu for a while, but it's really not about having an international hit. It's about connecting deeply to people. And Levy, every time he takes out his guitar, every time he uh, brandishes his voice, uh, makes a deep impression on the people who listen. And we hope that that's the case also in this virtual concert. So without further ado, we share with you Levi Robin. Hey everyone, happy Lag Omer. May the light and fire of the Rashbi be lit up within our souls. Opening up my 
sky my love came to me in a flash of bright headlights in the dark as I opened up my eyes hoping for right then I saw headlights This next song is called Breathe Easy. song I'm going to play you is a newer song called No Other.
Been traveling the long dry seas of land that carried my boat into a bank of sand. There I walked up and raised my hands, reaching up to God for rain again. God called, led me astray to an airy land of rust and decay. Oh, let there not be Good people, happy 33rd day of the Omer. It's an honor to be here with such high-flying souls, especially Rabbi Dove Bear Pinson, my rabbi, teacher, and friend. Over the last week or so, in the Iyun online quarantine kollel, we've been diving into the depths of song and music through Jewish teachings. In that spirit, I'd like to offer this poem called Music in Theory and Practice. Pianos provide up to 88 keys just to open one very small door, which is locked on both sides and guarded by angels wielding their fiery swords. If you can make it through all of the obstacles and you still want to come in, the only thing left is to tickle the ivories up close and under their chin. The gates have been closed for so long it shows the hinges have started to rust. There's piles of bones from the other souls whose dreams have turned into dust. While patiently waiting and perfectly playing their songs like it was a recital, they have forgotten the door they were knocking on led to a big tent revival. 
There was a man without any hands who would stand on the side and just listen. To all of the fans, this must be a scam. The door's jammed, it won't budge a smidgen. But he had a plan to sit at the grand and pretend like he was a musician. Just for a moment before someone noticed, he stealthily took his position. And that's when it happened, the laughing and clapping and all of the hooping and hollering. The man with no hands at the foot of the grand in a trance as he brought up his offering. He trembled and shivered and stared at the instrument, ignorant but with devotion. He dropped to his knees, banged his head on the keys, and with that, the door finally opened. That was Eden Perlstein, also known as E Prime, and Darshan, who, uh, besides all of his beautiful musical projects, also teaches at the Ian Cola on a regular basis about poetry. Eden is one of the highlights of the week. He's both a scholar and a poet, the rare combination. He's also uh, someone who has been editing Rev Pinson's books for quite a while. Next up, we have Zusha. Zusha has been taking the Jewish world by storm with their new sound, which is strangely familiar and new at the same time, like a lot of great music. It clearly harkens back to the Nigunim of the Shtetl, of Eastern Europe, and indeed uh, many of the songs that uh, Zechariah and Shlomo sing do come from the past, but they bring down their own nigunim, they modify them, they develop them in their own style that might be called jazzy or funky, whatever you want to call it. It sort of makes you nostalgic for a shtetl that never really existed but maybe God willing could in the future. And I know that I'm not the only one who feels those kinds of emotions when listening to the Zusha music. I've been honored to help support them along their career. And honestly, you should too, because we need them. We need them to be strong music makers for Claw Yisrael in the world. And we're so thankful to have them here as alumni of the Ewan Kolel and members of our larger community. So, Without further ado, Zusha. It's a treat to be here with Ian Kolel. It's one of our favorite places to be. Thank you to Rav Pinson, our holy teacher, our holy mentor, and thank you to everyone that's listening now. And uh, we're very excited. We're going to play some beautiful songs for you. L'chaim. L'chaim. <laughs> Lass <laughs> Oh, 
It's a new song. It's a beautiful song to start out your day with, to make yourself ready, ready for Hashem's light, ready for Hashem's glory. To be a chariot, to be a, a, a vehicle for Hashem to, to take you on a journey and bring His glory into the world. The following song is from Shema. It's brand new. We've never played it before. Ever. Yeah. Never publicly. We just ever. finished uh, working on it yesterday. And um, it's really precious. So we're what do the, word, what do the words mean? What do the words mean before we start? To praise you, Hashem, and to unify your name in love. Those are the words. That's the whole purpose of why we sing. That's, that's what the learning at the Iyun Kolo is about. And all the people we meet there help us on the, the, achieve that purpose. And then the chorus is Yisrael Behava, that Hashem has chosen us with love. And when you feel that, it uh, makes the learning go really, really beautifully. That's why it's the conclusion of the blessing upon learning. Um, if someone forgot earlier on. So with that, let's sing. And once you learn it, sing along with us, everyone in your home, wherever you are. Our mom is, uh, we're there, we're singing with you. I have a be amo so be amo so be a I have be amo so be amo so be a
Thank you to the Youth Center for having us, for all the people that organized it, from Jeremy and our, our manager, Paul Thiel. And thank you for the very thank you to the Variolum for blessing us with the power to sing and to play, to make music, to conclude a, a learning session of music with music. How beautiful, you know. Yeah. It's okay. a blessing to to have breath with which to to sing and to have fingers that can play. So thank you, Hashem. Music. Peace, wandering ones. This is a poem based on Rebbe Nachman's famous teaching from Likutei Moharan, volume 1, number 64, called Songs from the Void. The shepherd sees the path ahead and he holds aloft his staff to point the way for faithful sheep who don't know how to ask. He carves the air and he splits the hair of wolves who sit and wait and he keeps the flock together through the vicissitudes of fate. He occupies their time and mind with a most elaborate game that runs on rules and rolls and rhymes. The river needs the rain, but rain won't fall until the call of the lost sheep is heard. It's a silent song so gentle, strong to speak without a word. It turns the head of our shepherd friend who scans the fertile void. But he sees no sheep in that valley deep, on the precipice he's poised. To the ends of the earth and back again, he would go without protest to save the fleece of a single sheep and return them to the rest. But once he's wandered far beyond the borders of the camp, it gets so dark there is no light, no stars of night nor lamp. Just a language made of ancient pain that's spoken by the frogs who praise the name throughout the day in the swampiest of bogs. They taught me that the only way to bring the lost sheep home is to sing the soul to wake, make water flow from stone. They taught me that the only way to bring the lost sheep home is to sing the soul to wake, make water flow from stone. Peace, earthlings. This is a poetic meditation on our being and all being called Animate My Anatomy. World symphony, word symmetry. Turn inwardly out to the assembly. That's a rounds and compounds the crown while we sweep beneath the throne underground. That's where we found all the fallen fruit that we gather and elevate back to the root. So seeds of light like gores of root. When you pierce the veil, there's more to view. There's peaks to climb and secret signs. Believe you me, what you seek, you find. The valley sighs and the river swells. Every blade of grass got a story to tell. We rap and sing. We dance and dream. Prayer paves the way for the path of peace. We craft the mask of a majesty with the handle of the yak still attached to a tree. Tree, 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 tree of life, body of a man, heart of the world and a grain of sand, hands of time, womb of the galaxy, divine mind, animate my anatomy, tree of life, body of a man, heart of the world and a grain of sand, hands of time, womb of the galaxy, divine mind, animate my anatomy. Yo, shout out to Rev Pinson and the Eun Center. The song is called Long Story Short. And last but not least, we have Zeke Finn from the West Coast, who uh, has also studied with us in the past at the Ewan Kollel and learned closely with Rav Pinson, and who will soon be releasing his first album uh, under a major label, God willing. His music is sort of a combination of pop and hip hop. Um, his lyrics draw on his experiences and his Torah learning and sometimes incorporate Yiddish. Uh, but really, Zeke is just a neshama. A neshama who has been given the capacity to channel uh, music to us um, from his father and his uh, lineage, his secret lineage of poets. And uh, we missed Seek on the West Coast, but uh, for the purposes of the virtual concert, he's right here. So 
Without further ado, Zeke Finn. Thank you all so much for coming to our Iyun Kola Lagba Omer concert. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. I want to thank God Baz, Levi Robin, Zusha, and Zeke Finn for their incredible performances, and also to thank all of you at home who tuned in. The Iyun Kola opens for one week every three months to run themed learning, much like the program you just participated in. Using the Iyun Kola's innovative full-spectrum methodology, we explore topics from a variety of perspectives, including Tanakh, Midrash, Gemara, Halakha, Kabbalah, Hasidut, Poetry, Philosophy, Science, and much more. In addition, we're excited to announce the opening soon of a full-time learning program at Iyun, where students can study daily with the guidance of Rav Dover Pinson Shlita. To find out more about these programs and to get involved, visit our website at www.theiyunkolel.com or send us an email at iyun.kolel at gmail.com. Additionally, follow Rav Dover Pinson on Facebook and YouTube for more updates and opportunities to learn Torah with us. I'm Jeremy Tibbetts, director of the Yun Kolel, and we hope you all have a Lichtige Lagba Omer.